So in this video, we're going to be looking at brake flushing, brake fluid flushing. How do we flush the fluid in the brakes? Did you know there was fluid in the brakes? But now you do. But how do we do that? And why is there an empty Powerade bottle here? And what is this instrument right here? Well, all will be revealed. So let's get going. So brake bleeding and brake flushing, what is the difference? Well, this is typically an instrument you would use when bleeding your brakes. And when I say bleeding the brakes, I mean bleeding them with air. You might have air in the system, air mixed in with the brake fluid, which is really bad, by the way. And you would use an instrument like this to bleed the brakes themselves. But that's not what we're doing today. Perhaps I will talk a little more about that. What we're doing is actually flushing the brake fluid completely. So all of the brake fluid that lives inside this car, all the way from the master cylinder overflow all the way to each wheel on the vehicle all four of them we're going to be flushing the fluid entirely so everything in there now is going to be removed and replaced with something a lot newer and a lot better like this right here so brake bleeding, we're only really going to be bleeding the brake system if we suspect air in the brake system itself. Now we'll talk about that in a second. But that's typically when we would bleed the brakes, we bleed them of the air in the system. Now the flushing, the flushing is what we're going to do now, and that includes bleeding as well. When you flush the brake fluid out of the system, then the bleeding is kind of included in that process as well, which you will see. So why might you want to flush the brake fluid out of the system? Maybe you've replaced a brake component like a caliper, a brake line, the master cylinder for example. Then you'll probably typically flush the system as well. So why else might you want to flush all the brake fluid out of the system? Well, it's just a serviceable item, just like changing the oil in the car, for example. We equally just change the brake fluid, we change the gearbox oil, the differential oil, lots of things that you normally do at regular intervals. Now, the brake fluid, every two years, every 30,000 miles, something like that, that's when you want to change the brake fluid out of the system, and that's flushing it out, and that's what we're doing today. But why? Why every two years? Why every 30,000 miles? Well, it likes to absorb water and it also gets darkened over time and it, use, it loses its functionality. And when something loses its functionality to do with safety, i.e. stopping the vehicle, it's very important that you need to be changing this. So uh, this is why we're doing this today and this is why it needs to be done. So the vehicle I'm in right now has front caliper brakes, disc brakes, so the pads come in contact with the disc, and on the back it has drum brakes with shoes inside. If you want to learn all about caliper brakes and drum brakes, I'll link a video in the description below so you can learn all about that. But it doesn't matter what brake system we have on this car, they're going to bleed the same, they're going to flush the same, so don't worry about caliper, drum brakes, you know, how do I bleed each one. All of them have a little bleed screw and they're going to be accessed in the exact same way. So what if I haven't changed any brake components and I'm not due for a brake fluid change? How do I know if my fluid is bad or you know anything like that? Well um, number one your brake pedal down here. Your brake pedal has no response. Maybe the brake pedal goes all the way down to the floor and it might sit there, it might never come back up again. That's a good sign something might be wrong there. Number two, if you have brake fluid leaking out your brake system, whether they're on the caliper brakes or the drum brakes, then it's a good sign you've introduced air into the system and they will need to be bled and I recommend flushing them at that. But it's important to fix the leak of the, you know, the root of the problem first, why it's leaking, get that fixed and then you can go to flush the system. But if you have brake fluid leaking from any brake component on your vehicle, even the brake lines uh, near the master cylinder, which we'll look at in a second, then this is why you would need to do this after the repair is done. So there are two examples of something kind of catastrophic that could happen. But uh, the most common thing is air in the brake lines. How do I know if I have air in the brake lines? Well, you'll have like a soft kind of spongy brake pedal. If air gets into the brake lines, it can prevent the brake fluid from flowing properly, causing the brake pedal to feel spongy or soft. So the most common reason for a soft brake pedal is just simply air in the system. The easiest way to diagnose this problem is to pump the brake pedal gently a few times, and in doing so, the pedal should become firmer with each gentle press of the pedal then if it does, it's a good sign you might have some air, air in your brake system 
and then we can proceed to um, bleed the brakes with the pump or we can just flush the system which will in turn bleed them anyway. Okay, so you know you need to flush your brakes now, but what kind of brake fluid do you need? Well, there are lots of different types of brake fluid out there, synthetic, you know, dot three, like which one do I use? Well, check your service manual. Every vehicle is different between year makes and models, so it's very important to check. I'm working on a 2007 Saturn View all-wheel drive, and the service manual calls for a brake fluid dot three, and it's a, synth a synthetic type as well. So this is what we're going to use. And how much do we need? Well, around one liter is enough for pretty much any truck, uh, like light truck or car, for example. So I have three containers of 354 milliliters, and that should be enough to do an entire flush of the whole system. When you buy this stuff, buy it and then do the job immediately. It doesn't have very good shelf life, so you shouldn't be storing this in your cupboard for later. Just buy as much as you need and use it immediately. So there's a couple of brains of the operation here, you know, it's not just a brake pedal and some brake shoes or brake discs and pads for example. And one of the little brains here is called the master cylinder. Now you may have heard of this like, oh the master cylinder is broken on the car, I, I need a new one, the mechanic wants $400. We always heard about the old master cylinder growing up. <laughs> well, uh, this is what it looks like. Well, you can't actually see it. But this uh, plastic box right here is called the overflow for the master cylinder. It's not the master, master cylinder itself, it's just a tank full of brake fluid that attaches itself to the master cylinder. And the job of the master cylinder, I probably shouldn't get brake fluid on that sensor, I'll clean that off in a second. The job of the master cylinder is to convert your brake pedal power into hydraulic force of the brake fluid and that in turn feeds into the calipers uh, or on the back there the uh, drum brakes and, and it stops the car. The very simple job, so it's, it's like a little mechanical component there. So it's this typically a silver box, uh, you might see some tubes coming out of it, but this is the overflow and this is what feeds into the master cylinder. So this here is where you put your brake fluid and uh, while we're at it, the brake fluid should be clear and not, not dirty. Um, if you open a brand new one of these, you can see what color it's supposed to be. So here's a new one. I don't know if you can see in there, it looks a little orange, but I'm gonna put some on a tissue so you can see. Like it's pretty clear, isn't it? You see that? So that's what brand new brake fluid should look like. That's, uh, we don't want too much air getting in contact with that. And then let's look at the actual fluid in the system and uh, we can do a comparison see how old this looks so you can see uh, the difference here here's the brand new there and there is the uh, one in the vehicle right now so you can see uh, it's definitely a lot darker a lot kind of yellowy browner so it's a good opportunity to replace this right now on a bad system maybe it hasn't been changed in 10 years or more you might start seeing this brown which is really bad so uh, we're gonna flush this out today and get some nice fluid in here Okay, so let's get started with the ignition off, so there's no key in there, and the brakes are cool, you haven't gone on a journey, so the car has been sitting for a few hours, for example. Apply the brake three to five times, or until the brake pedal effort increases significantly, in order to deplete the brake booster power reserve. So three to five times. Perfect. Next thing we're going to do is locate the master cylinder overflow here. So on the Saturn view, it's in this corner right here on the driver's side. We're going to remove the cap here. And what we're going to do, we're going to use a turkey baster or some sort of pipette. And we're going to try and remove some of the fluid, as much fluid as possible. You won't get a whole lot, but the eye, oh my god, look how bad that is. The idea is we want to remove as much fluid out the system as possible, and that's less new fluid we have to push in to get the old fluid out so that that's really what we're doing here i've just got this large yogurt pot right here that i'm just going to collect it in for now but be careful uh brake fluid here it eats away at paint so don't get it on your body work try to be really careful with it mop it up with some maybe soapy water or some towels if you accidentally spill it but i've got a really big container here so i shouldn't spill too much Oh, 
Oh, that's bad, isn't it? Look at that. So typically, I say typically, the brake fluid is worse next to the uh, the calipers, for example, right where the uh, the pads come in contact with the disc. That's where the worst fluid generally is. Um, so it's a little bit um, disheartening to see it this bad um, in an area where the fluid is, you know, supposed to be uh, a fair bit cleaner. <laughs> All right, that should do it. So I've got as much as I can get out of the overflow here. Uh, number one, you should never let this run dry at any point during the flushing process. Uh, so we're going to see that very soon. Again, this is the overflow. So we can, you know, use the turkey baster to get as much out of the overflow as possible. It doesn't mean the master cylinder down there is going to be running empty. So if you were confused about that. Because this brake fluid is so bad, I'm just going to throw it away. If your brake fluid isn't this bad, which I hope it isn't, then you can actually pour that into this device right here. And we're going to talk about this device right here now so it gets less confusing. So if your brake fluid looks generally good, there's no bits in there, pour it in this bottle right here. Now what is this bottle? So there's two ways to flush a brake system. There's the one way, which is with one person. That's the method with no friends, like me. And this is why I have one of these. However, if you have a willing participant that can help you during this process, you don't need this at all. You just need their full cooperation for around 20 to 30 minutes. So if you have that, you can skip the whole step with learning about this. Well, I do recommend learning about it, but you can skip the step where you make one of these, for example. But I'm going to be talking about the one-person method mainly in this video, but I'll cover the two-person method as well, just so you're familiar with both of them. So this bottle uh, is pretty much just a power aid bottle and it has a pipe attached. And again, at the other end of that, there's a zip tie and a pipe. Because the idea is we're going to connect this to each of our brake bleed screws on each of the brakes on the car. So we have four wheels, four brakes, and uh, four points of uh, flushing the system. And the idea is when we pump the brake on the car and undo the bleed screw, the brake fluid's going to shoot out. And it's going to shoot out into this bottle. But we don't want to introduce air into the system. So this bottle will hold some brake fluid. And if uh, there's some suck back that goes back into the car, we don't want to suck air into the car. It's going to suck the fluid that lives in this bottle. So that's the idea of, of this little, uh, you know, primitive system right here. Um, it just allows us to catch the brake fluid. But if there's some suck back, we're not sucking back air, we're sucking back fluid. So that's why it looks so simple. And that's roughly the job of this. So if you want more information on how to make a brake bleeder like this one here, I've linked a video in the description below so you can check it out and build one yourself. So like I say, if your fluid isn't too bad, you can go ahead and put that in this bottle right here. Uh, if it's terrible, uh, then I recommend just using some, uh, you know, new fluid in there. Uh, th the idea is this fluid should not enter the system under really any circumstance. But sometimes if there's kind of some suck back, a, a little bit might go in, for example. So it's, it's just so air doesn't go into the system. That, that's the reason we're putting some brake fluid in this bottle right now. So it, it will just get sucked back into the system so I didn't put a whole lot in here you can just see there's a little bit here we don't really want to waste good fluid um, if your hose doesn't have a solid fit in the lid here because the idea is we want this hose all the way at the bottom and we never under any circumstances want that to hose that hose to become unsubmerged from the water there or well, the brake fluid um, if not, if it's not a solid fit, put a zip tie around here because it's very important that this hose stays in the brake fluid at the bottom there. And again, it's very important that this doesn't accidentally fall over. So two things there. So now the brake bleed is prepared. What we're going to do, we're going to tip brand new brake fluid into the master cylinder overflow right here. We're going to pretty much fill it to the rim right here. And then we're going to put the lid back on and we're going to start the flushing process. So a little, little funnel goes a long way sometimes, especially if uh, it can damage your paint, right? <laughs> so we're just going to fill up the overflow pretty much to the top. 
So you can see it's pretty much up to the rim right now. So the idea is, this is how we're going to flush the system. We pour new brake fluid into here, and then we're going to flush it out of each corner of the car, each wheel. And as we flush it out of each wheel, for example, we top this up. Now it's very important this overflow doesn't go below halfway, just to you know keep, make it safe, right? We never want to introduce air into this system. So during the flushing process, always keep an eye on this overflow. If it gets less than halfway, fill it up, put more in. You know that that's the idea here. So all the new fluid during this process goes in the overflow, and all of the old fluid gets evacuated out of each corner of the car. So that's the key to the whole process here. So now we're going to start bleeding at the first wheel, the first brake of the car. So let's talk about bleed ordering now. Now there's a very big common misconception with this, so let's clear this up right now. It used to be that if your master cylinder was in the corner, say there's the passenger side, there's the driver's side, you see it's kind of closer more towards the driver's side. So the idea is you bleed the, whe the wheel, the brake, which is furthest away from the master cylinder. So if it's at the front driver's side, then the furthest wheel away would be the passenger your rear followed by the rear on the driver followed by the passenger front brake right there and then lastly it would be this one because this one's closest that is always the way it used to be done until we introduce ABS. Now ABS is pretty much on every vehicle now, isn't it? If you have a, a classic car that's decades old, then it's a foolproof process. Furthest one first, followed by the shortest one last. So distance to the master cylinder from the brake. But now uh, ABS has been introduced. Uh, there's lots of uh, weird uh, wizardry going on. And really, you just have to refer to your service manual. Unless you have the specific architecture on how this is interfaced with the ABS system and in turn the brakes. There's just no real way you're going to know that um, without doing some research. Check the service manual, check Google, find out for the year, the make, and the model of the car, all three of them. Just because it, 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 it's good for the year above or below yours doesn't mean it's okay for yours. So always check this. And the bleed ordering is important because uh, if you imagine a network of tubes, I don't know if you've been to like a science museum when you were a kid and you watch how the water flows through the pipes and how the air bubbles rise through a, a network of tubes. Well, the idea is there's lots of brake lines in this car and from this overflow right here to each wheel, there's a network of pipes. It's not like one pipe goes from here to the wheel. It goes through uh, the, the ABS system. There's probably a pipe that goes down here, then over here, then over here, for example. So this is, this is why ordering is important. And the idea is we want to do the furthest away one first and then the you know the next one second but with with the abs system introduced uh, the network changes so refer to the f service manual and you just need to type in something like uh, bleed ordering for saturn view 2007 for example so that's how you find out the ordering and that is why the ordering is important we don't we don't want to introduce any air uh, obvious right and number two we want to make sure that all the old fluid is evacuated from the system so if we bleed this brake system first, yeah, you know, like this line might be nice and clear, but the, then the contaminated stuff kind of flows in from another passage. So by doing it in a specific order, that is how we get all of the old fluid out and, you know, it's not getting reintroduced from a different line or something like that. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, comment below, I'll re-clarify, but uh, let's get on with this. So lo and behold, the service manual for the 2007 Saturn View 3.5 litre, the bleeding order is different from what you would expect. It's not ordered by distance, but something kind of a little bit different. So first, it's going to be the right rear, so the passenger side rear, followed by the passenger side front, followed by the driver's rear, followed by the driver's front. So that is why you should always check the manual and never go by distance. So let's go. So I'm at the back of the car here on the floor. Let me show you where the bleeder screws are, on a Saturn view anyway, but they generally they look very similar amongst, you know, different cars. 
So there's the drum brake system and you see there just above the brake line there's the bleeder screw right there. So it's got a little rubber cap on there you typically take that off. Let me grab that and with the cap removed you can see the bleeder screw and that's how we're going to be bleeding the brakes right there. And let me show you the front of the vehicle as well. So I will say that during this whole flushing process, you're not going to need to remove the wheels or raise the car. Maybe on some vehicles, perhaps, but generally you can access these things without removing the wheels. But on the front wheels of the car, why not make your life easier and turn the steering all the way to the left, for example, and then we can access the bleeder screw a lot easier because the wheel is going to be turned out. And similar on the passenger side, when we access that one, again, make our life easier, turn it all the way to the right, and then we can access the bleeder a lot easier on that side too. So here we are on the front of the vehicle, we just come in here, we can see the bleeder screw here, it has a, it has a rubber cap on there, and there's the bleeder screw right there. So on the front of the vehicle they look a bit gold, on, on the back they look a bit silver, but you know, colour doesn't matter. But that's where they're located, just find a brake line or the brake components and you can easily locate them. They might be here, down here, on the front, but you will find them. So the bleeder screws, this is what they look like if you're curious. And you may be also curious, why the hell do I have six of them? Well, if you live in an area where it's really rusty, uh, the idea is we're just going to crack these open. So we're going to get a wrench over this, uh, over this hex nut right here and just crack it open a little. And when we do that, the fluid will flow out of this hole right here on the top. And you can see at the bottom here, there's a little hole right there and that's where the brake fluid will come. So the brake fluid will go in this hole and out of this big hole here and then ultimately into our power aid bottle. So that's how these work. But if you live in a rusty area, then these can snap right off. <laughs> so what I did, I went to a pick and pull, like a pick apart. I grabbed a few of these. On this vehicle, uh, the front ones, I believe, are bigger than the rear ones. So you can see there are actually two different sizes. But luckily, where the hose connects on these bleeder screws, it is the same size. So thankfully, I don't have to worry about having two different hose sizes. But if you did, you could get maybe a metal clamp on there and crank it down a bit and that way when you attach your bleeder to the end of these bleeder screws it's not going to fall off because that is the last thing you want. So like I said we're going to start with the passenger rear brake and because there's not much room to work with I'm going to show you right here how we're going to do it. So imagine this is or well, the the black well, the rear ones are smaller aren't they so imagine that's connected to the passenger rear brake system we're just going to come in with our hose pop it on the end right there and then just tighten our little zip tie. Make sure it's solid, make sure it's not going to fall off. If it's kind of loose and wiggly then maybe get a hose clamp or something like that. Don't half ass it if that makes sense. So make sure it's a good fit because the last thing we want is to introduce air into the system. So that's what we're going to do. But before that we need to find a wrench that fix this uh, hex nut right here. So I have this cool little wrench set right here, but really anything will pretty much work. But uh, this 5 sixteenths one, well, is it? Yeah, no, sorry, 5 sixteenths. It's really hard to see. Um, but yeah, the idea is, what I'm going to do anyway, and what I find a lot easier, you can use this end, you can use this end, it's up to you. But what I do is, with the bleeder screw right here, I put this end over the top. So imagine this is on the car now, so I put the wrench on first and then I connect the hose afterwards. That way the wrench is kind of locked on there, it's not going to slip off, you can easily open and close the bleeder screw, you're not going to have any problems. So that's the way I do it, I put the wrench on first and then I put the hose on second. So here's the basic setup you should have. We have our wrench on there, you can see it just chilling out there, and then we have our pipe connected to the front there. And then ultimately the pipe is connected to our sturdy power aid bottle and the other end of the tube is nicely submerged in our brake fluid. So that's the setup we have for a one person bleeder method. Now let's get flushing this first brake caliper right here. Well, drum brake really. So I'm going to show you here because we have more room. 
When we crack open this bleeder valve right here, just do it a quarter of a turn. That's all you really need to do. A quarter should be plenty. Because if we do it a lot more, then what happens is you might have brake fluid coming out through, you know, through these threads. We don't want that. We just want the brake fluid to come out through the intended hole right here. So a quarter of a turn should be enough. If you don't see any brake fluid, or maybe you've done it a, f a few more turns and absolutely nothing is coming out, then well, what can happen is these can get clogged. So you see this kind of tiny hole here? And remember when we looked at our brake fluid before, we had all these contaminants in there? It's very easy for one of those to you know, clog this hole up, then we have a bit of a problem. So in a case where this gets clogged up you can use something like carb cleaner to flush it all out and even if that doesn't work then you can replace them so the idea is i have all these spares one in case you know they snap off i can replace it and number two maybe one of them gets clogged so i have a lot of spares available in case something bad happens and you know what something bad always happens so why not right now for those of you that live in a rusty environment you may have some trouble undoing these and yeah it can be frustrating and yeah these can actually round off so if you live remotely in any kind of rusty environment don't even try and undo these soak them in uh, maybe some pb blaster or my personal favorite the uh, transmission fluid mixed with the acetone of 50 50 and really soak these maybe spray it on with a spray bottle and uh, leave it overnight on all four of these you know don't even risk it now I'm gonna stop uh, stop rambling on so pipes in the fluid we've got a loop-de-loop -loop. we have a very solid fit right here it's not gonna accidentally slip off we're ready to uh, crack open that bleeder valve so we're gonna do it a quarter of a turn and uh, see what happens now the very first wheel here let's uh... oh there it is so I'm in the vehicle, I'm going to press this brake pedal as down, you know, all the way to the floor and then release it up and go, go quite slowly as well. All right, let's go check. So just one pump of the brakes, look, it's uh, completely black. In, in retrospect, I don't think it really mattered if we uh, poured that old stuff in here rather than new fluid, but... Uh, <laughs> there you go, right? So um, we pretty much repeat this process. Now the very first uh, brake, the passenger rear, is going to take a lot longer than everything else. That's pretty much going to flush the entire system, other than just the lines that go to the other wheels, for example. So um, if you've used two thirds of your fluid and you're still on the first one, don't worry. <laughs> so the idea is we want to keep flushing until the line, the line runs clear. So we want all the crap out you know all the all the brown all the all the all the nastiness so so that's the idea this this one's going to take a lot longer and the other ones are going to be a, a lot quicker to flush it out so uh, let me show you the two-person method now i'm going to try and get some help then i can show you how easy it is when you have two people so when you have two people, you just need a hose, but you don't need one of these kind of backwash systems. You don't need fluid in the bottom in, in case it comes back into the system. Uh, the idea is with the uh, two-person method, you just need a container. It could be a yogurt pot, pr pretty much anything. And it's pretty much exactly the same thing. Uh, but with the two-person method, um, you'll have someone in the car. They'll be ready on the brake. What you're going to do, you're going to say, OK, push the brake. Once they're pushing the brake, you just open up the, the bleeder screw. Because there's pressure on the lines already from the person kind of, you know, in the car holding the brake, uh, once they're holding it, you say, okay, um, hold the brake and then open it. So the brake goes down and then you say, okay, uh, tighten it, then say, okay, let go. And that way nothing ever gets forced back into the system because the whole time the uh, brake uh, bleed screw is open there's pressure on the on the foot brake so nothing ever gets sucked back you would never let go of the brake pedal with the bleed screw open if that makes sense so the whole time your partner has the uh, brake pedal pushed down uh, the brake bleed screw is open once you tighten it the foot comes off afterwards so that's why the two-person method is a lot easier but again you don't always have two people available and for the sake of making a cool little power aid bottle kit uh, i like the one-person method 
but sometimes brake break bleed screws are so tiny, so fiddly, and so annoying that sometimes two people is a lot easier. Or, or a special tool, you know, but they usually run really, really expensive. So this brake bleed screw here, you know, there's not much purchase on that. Look how skinny that is. And it can be frustrating, um, you know, if the tube keeps popping off this. And if this pops off and you get air into the system, you gotta repeat the whole process again. Imagine getting all the way to the driver's front, you know, your very last wheel, it pops off, uh, you get a bit of air in there, you gotta do the whole thing again back to the passenger rear passenger front driver rear driver front so that's what happens if you introduce air into the system or balls it up completely you gotta redo the whole thing all over again so that is why the uh, two-person system it can be a good idea as well but let me show you that now so now I'm on a different vehicle now. That doesn't really matter, you know, you can see uh, the setup is very similar. I'm gonna show you the two-person method. So we're gonna have one person in the car applying pressure to the brakes and the other person bleeding or flushing the brake fluid right here out of the bleeder valve. When doing the two-person brake bleeder method, communication is key. If your communication isn't right, you're gonna get air in the brakes and you're gonna have to start all over again from scratch. Let go. Press. Let go. Press. Let go. Hold. Let go. All right, we've done a few uh, bumps now. Let's check the overflow. Looks about half full, so we're gonna top it up. Never let this run less than halfway, trust me. So let's top it up now, and get more fluid in here to the top. And then we'll continue. Okay, so the rear passenger's running uh, quite clear now. We're gonna move to the passenger front, the next one, and repeat the process. So once we're done with our last brake bleeder screw here on the driver's front side, just come over to the master cylinder overflow and top it up for the final time. Make sure it's at the nice level, at the max line there, if there is one. And you're pretty much done. I say pretty much done because we need to check one thing. So coming into the car, take your car for a, a little, you know, just a trot around the neighborhood, maybe just on the road outside your house. Is the brake pedal soft and spongy? If so, repeat the process again. Chances are you've let air enter the system, which is never a good thing. Don't risk it. Do it all again in the same exact order and try and get that air out. That is the reason for that. If the brake feels firm and good, then you're pretty much good to go. Make sure all of those bleeder screws are back on. They're nice and tight and they're not going to go anywhere. Uh, there will be a torque spec for those. Don't over tighten them because you risk breaking the seal and brake fluid can leak down the side. So that's always a bad thing. If your car has a brake uh, light that maybe came on and that's the reason you're doing the, the, the flush, for example, Example, then uh, the light should uh, de-illuminate so it should go off so uh, that's another thing there but uh, what did you think it was pretty easy wasn't it I just want to say a real quick message to our viewers you I made this channel a few years ago and its primary aim was to give you the skills but more importantly the confidence in order to tackle pretty much any DIY job you may have. In the process we've saved our viewers thousands of dollars or pounds or euros, whichever currency you want to use. I've put multiple hours of time into making videos each and every week which I somehow juggle between family and a full time job. If any of our videos on our channel helped you, please support our channel by clicking the thanks button underneath any video on this channel. You can choose how much you wish to donate. It's going to go right back into the channel towards videos, tools and everything else. So thank you very much for that. When you make a donation towards the channel, you can put an optional message and your message will be highlighted along all the comments for everybody to see. The bigger the donation, the bigger the highlight, so everybody can see how awesome you are. So I hope you liked the uh, video on flushing the brake fluid. Uh, let me know if it helped you. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'll be happy to uh, help you out, answer those uh, niggles or whatnot, or any, any niggling problems. So um, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Uh, your support really helps us a lot. 
And uh, yeah, uh, my primary aim is to save you guys money. But not only that, teach you something about cars as well. You get the satisfaction of learning something and accomplishing something yourself. Take care.